Hello YouTube friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Deidre from Our Upcycled Life. Lots of thrifting, upcycling, and repurposing, and I love new crafting friends. So make sure you like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notification so you don't miss any great DIY content. Today I'm doing six projects with dollar store twine. Simple, easy, and I'm gonna do step-by-step -step tutorial to show you how you can do them yourself. Okay, let's get started. And for this project, I'm gonna be using this jute cord that I got at the dollar store. And you're gonna need a hot glue gun and a pair of scissors. I like to start my little circles with this no sew fabric glue. And that way in the beginning, I don't burn my fingers with my hot glue gun. And I like to work on a piece of parchment paper so it's not sticking to my good craft table. And we're just gonna start gluing the twine in circles. And I'm not going to do much of a voiceover on this video because it's pretty self-explanatory. So you can just watch me as I design this placemat. And there you have a placemat made out of jute from the dollar store. And I don't even think I used a quarter of the ball and it was $4. So I made this for probably about a dollar and I just love it. It looks perfect in my kitchen. It's a little pot that I thrifted. Uh, it's just a little tin, little metal flower pot and the white paint was a little bit yucky and um, had some scuff marks on it. So I'm going to paint it. I'm giving it one coat of my homemade chalk paint. I find with this method that chalk paint works the best. I've tried the acrylic paint and I've tried just a latex paint um, and it doesn't seem to adhere as well. I'll put a link below in the description for my recipe. 
Okay, so you need some Mod Podge. I use the matte finish, my little pot, and my graphics that I made on my laser jet printer, um, printed on plain paper. And don't forget to reverse your text. And you're gonna put a thin coat over the whole graphic. And sorry, I didn't realize I was kind of out of the filming area here, but it's just a light coat over that whole piece of graphic. Um, and you don't put any on the pot yet, you just put it on the piece of paper, and then you'll press it firmly onto the pot, make sure you get out any wrinkles, any air bubbles, and press it really firmly with your thumbs to make sure it has uh, adhered really well. Okay, I've let it sit overnight and I'm gonna add some twine along the top. Got my glue gun out and I'm gonna hot glue it all around the uh, top of the pot. Okay, now comes the fun part. You're gonna get a damp rag with water and just gently uh, dampen that graphic until you can just start to see the letters come through. If you put too much water on, it'll soak through and you'll wipe your letters off. So just dampen it. You can always add a little bit more water if you have to. Um, and then once you see the letters, just get rubbing and rub all the paper off until all you're left with is the graphics. I like to finish my projects with the Verathane water-based. It's non-yellowing. This one is a satin and it's actually made for the outdoors, but I like it because it's really durable. And I find that um, I like using it better than using the Mod Podge as a top coat. I just find this gives it more of a, um, a little clear coat and a uh, harder finish than the Mod Podge. And it also doesn't streak as much as the Mod Podge does. And there you have the finished project. I think it turned out just beautiful. So order some of that Mod Podge and give this technique a try. It's a lot of fun. This is some twine that I picked up at the dollar store and it makes perfect tassels. The first tip is a cell phone is a perfect size for a tassel. So I'm gonna use it to wrap my twine around and I find it takes about 30, it takes about 30 wraps for this size of twine to make a nice full tassel. You're gonna cut the end off and then slide it off the cell phone. And that's the other nice thing about using a cell phone is it's a slippery surface, so it slides off really easy. Now you're gonna cut a piece of twine uh, about um, 12 inches long, and that's gonna be your tie at the top. You're gonna string it through your wraps of twine, and then I like to tie it in a double knot so it stays nice and secure. Now you're gonna get another piece of twine about two feet long, and you're gonna make a loop at the top. You're gonna gather all of the twine together on the tassel, and you're going to put the loop at the top of the twine and leaving the long string at the bottom. And that's what you're gonna wrap around to make your top of the tassel. You wanna make sure when you're wrapping that you're pulling it quite tight because you don't want it to slide off and you want it to be nice and firm. So just keep a, a tight tension on that end of that twine and keep wrapping it around until you get where you want to stop. Now this is the end of that piece of twine and that's the loop. You're going to take the piece that you are wrapping around and pull it through the loop and then that bottom piece of twine you're going to pull on it and it's going to pull that loop through the twine that you wrapped around and make it nice and snug and tight to hold it in place. You're going to cut off that little piece of twine on the top and you can trim up the twine that was left over on the bottom. 
And then you're gonna cut the whole end of the tassels so they're all evenly the same length. And I like to take the twine at the bottom and unravel it so it makes a nice ruffly look. You don't have to do this step, I just think it makes the tassel look a lot more professional and a lot more full. And there you have a perfect tassel ready to add onto any of your DIY projects. And this is a planter that I'm gonna transform into a beautiful boho planter. I picked it up at Dollarama for $3. And you're gonna need a ball of twine that I also picked up at Dollarama. The first thing you wanna do is make three strands six feet long. And you're gonna take those three strands and I'm going to tape them right to my table so they'll stay put. And then I'm gonna start braiding. And make sure you braid them nice and tight so it's a nice looking braid all the way down right to the bottom of the six feet. Okay, now we got it all braided. And we're going to take the pot and we're gonna put one round of the braid along the whole bottom of the pot. And I've kind of glued the ends on each end of the braided piece just so it stays together. Warm that glue gun up and then stick that braided piece around the whole bottom of the pot. And when you meet, cut the end and then glue it down firmly with a little bit of hot glue. Now you're just gonna take your twine and just start wrapping all around the whole pot. Now I'm gonna put another layer of the braided piece of twine around the pot. This kind of just gives it a little bit of texture instead of just having twine wrapped around the pot. I think it just kind of makes it look a little bit more elegant and a little bit more expensive. And again, just cut it with your scissors when they meet and glue it down really well with a little bit of hot glue. And wrap some more twine. And one more layer of the braided piece. And then you're gonna add the twine to the top of the pot. Okay, and now we have that all done and now we're ready to add the nice fringe. Take a string and measure it around the length of the pot and leave about three or four inches on each end. Now I'm going to use a little bit of a thinner twine for this and what you're going to do is you're going to take about four inches of the twine cut in half and you're gonna cut a whole bunch of those because that's what's going to make up the fringe along the top. And you're gonna need a lot. This is where the patience comes in. Okay, so I have them all cut. And now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna do a lark's head knot. So on that piece that you cut that fit around the pot, just loop it over the back and then pull the two little strings through and attach all of those little pieces that you just cut all along that piece of string. Now doesn't that look awesome? Still a lot of work to do yet. I'm gonna glue that fringe all along the top of the pot. Okay, now it's all firmly attached to the top of the pot. Now I'm gonna add that last piece of the braided twine along the top on top of that fringe. Now time to unravel all of that fringe. 
And now I'm gonna take my comb and I'm going to just comb it and get all the loose pieces out of it and make it look nice and pretty and flat. Now I need to cut that fringe so it's all the same length all the way around. And here's a little trick. Take some painter's tape and tape it all around the whole jar so you can have it completely even all the way around. And then you can take the scissors and cut along the bottom of the tape. A few little pieces that need to be cleaned up and then we're almost done. And there you have a beautiful boho style planter with dollar store twine and a dollar store planter. This one's a really simple upcycle. Everybody's seen it. You just wrap some twine around the tin can, but I'm gonna put a really cute little fringe around the top to give it that little extra special um, touch. So I'm gonna work away with that. I'm using my hot glue gun with some hot glue from Gorilla Goo Glue, which I love. I'll put a link down below in the description. If you haven't tried out their glue sticks, they're fantastic. all covered and the reason that I painted it with the white spray paint is because when you're wrapping the twine you can kind of see a little tiny peek through here and there and I didn't want the silver showing I wanted it to be white so that's why I did that I forgot to paint the bottom of it but that's okay um, and now I'm going to make a fringe around the top I am going to cut a piece of this cord that is double the size around and then we're just going to do some larks head knots I'm just going to cut a whole bunch that are probably um, about that long. I'm going to cut a bunch of those to go around the rim. I've got these cut all out and now I'm going to just do a lark's head knot along that main string and just like that. And I'm going to do that all along until it's the width of the tin can. Okay, I've got it all finished and it goes right around my whole tin can. And now I'm gonna just trim it because it's too long. I wanna do it a little bit shorter. So I'm just gonna trim it up with my scissors and then we're ready to finish it off. All done and it's so super cute. I love it and it's gonna look fantastic along the edge of this tin can. I am just gonna hot glue it in place and it'll be all done. Okay, I'm gonna kick it up a notch even more. I wanna put a beaded base around the bottom of it. I'm gonna use my hot glue. I've just got some beads here and I'm just gonna glue them around the outside, the hole at the bottom, around the hole outside of the tin can. I think by the time we're done, nobody's gonna even know that this was a tin can. And how cute is this? All you need is a tin can, some jute twine from the dollar store, a little bit of cording for around the top, some wooden beads, and this is so cute and so inexpensive, but looks high end. Okay, and this is the bottle I'm gonna use. It's an actual barbecue sauce bottle that we love. It's really, really yummy. And I love the little wooden top on it. So if you don't wanna put plants on it, in it to propagate, you can just screw the little wooden top on it and it would look really sweet too. And I'm just using some dollar store twine. And the first thing you wanna do is you want to tie a circle around the neck of the bottle and just loosely tie it with just two simple knots. And then you just want to cut the ends off and you'll have a loose little piece of twine that you're just going to pull off the top of the bottle. The next thing you want to do is measure out a piece of twine six times the length of the bottle. Now I only did four and I came up a little bit short so you want to make sure you do six lengths of the bottle and that's the length of the rope that you want and you want to cut it and then you want to measure out 
eight pieces that length. Now you're going to take your little circle and this knot is called a lark's head knot. Really simple little knot. You just fold your piece of twine in half from the eight pieces that you cut, put it through the circle and then loop it through the back and then pull it tight and it's attached to your circle. Now you're going to tie all eight of those pieces all around that circle so they're evenly spaced. Now comes the fun part. You're going to put that circle of twine with all those eight pieces tied onto it with the lark's head knot on top of the bottle. Now you're gonna take two pieces of that twine and take the middle pieces from each of those and just tie a simple knot. and you're just gonna work around the whole bottle. And you wanna make sure when you're tying your knots that it's the same length down as the knot that's right beside it. And just kinda keep measuring and making sure that your knots all line up horizontally around the bottle. And just keep going all around the bottle. And there's the first row completely done. And now you wanna create that triangle pattern. So you're going to take the two inside strings that will create a triangle and tie knots all around that row. And you're gonna keep repeating that pattern until you get to the very bottom of the bottle. This also works great on mason jars, on wine bottles. Give it a try, whatever glass bottles you have laying around. And there you have it all finished. And I took all the twine at the bottom and tied it into a tassel. And now we're gonna make the hanger for the top. And you're gonna want three pieces of twine about three times the length of the wine bottle and I'm just going to braid it so it makes a nice fancy handle. I'm just going to tape the three strands to my table and braid away. Tie two knots at the end of it and it's ready to put on the bottle. You're going to take your hot glue gun and just evenly space the handle from one side of the bottle onto the other side. And I've cut some twine to wrap around the neck of the bottle to finish it off. And I'm going to use my hot glue gun just to securely attach it to the neck of the bottle. And there you have a beautiful upcycled bottle made into a plant hanger that's perfect for your boho style decor. Okay, so that wraps up all six projects. I would love to know which one you liked best. Leave a comment down below. And if you like this video, I'm sure you'd really love this one. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and we'll see you in the next video.